time for the sponsor perspective portion of the program. Joining me now is Michael Gettler, the Chief Executive Officer of Viatris. Before we begin, a quick clarification. While I'm conducting this interview and the questions are mine, the content of this portion of the event should not be considered editorial. We're going to still have a good time and ask you tough questions. I want to just ask you, Michael, you know, we've gone through this really weird time, and we're actually not through it, on COVID-19 and its impact. And I'm interested from your perch, what we've seen by way of what we should be learning about society. How has this hit different communities differently? Should we be thinking about how we deliver healthcare differently? What's on your dashboard when it comes to what we've learned from COVID-19? Yeah, thank you, Steve. And look, this is actually a question that's very apropos for us because you have to remember that Beatrice was actually born in COVID. So we really got a unique vantage point on the situation. And to me, the pandemic really reinforced why we created Viatris in the first place, because access, access to high quality medicine is absolutely critical. Disparity still exists. And if anything, COVID actually made it worse. And so two things I want to point out that uh, speak out to us. One is the importance of really strong, resilient supply chains. They need to be maintained. They need to be protected because access is not just about affordability. It's about actually getting the product in the first place. You open the newspapers, every day you read about supply chain shortages, whether it's toilet paper or microchips for cars or iPhones or you name it. This industry, the pharmaceutical industry, I think has fared better than others because there was such a focus on it. I can speak for our company. We had service levels in 2021 so far that are at or above historic peak levels. And we were able to do that because we have multiple manufacturing facilities across the world. We started out via Trist with over 50 manufacturing facilities around the world. And that helps us to ensure continuity of supply. So that's one aspect is the supply chains that need to be protected. Another one is just different ways of working together, working in the virtual world. We had to learn that as Viatris, uh, we combined two companies, you know, the legacy Upjohn division and, and Mylan. And a lot of our colleagues that are working together every day have not been able to meet in person ever. So we had to find different ways of working. But it's not just within the company, it's with our partners, with suppliers, with our customers, with regulators. We need to learn how to do that. And I think one of the important things is that everybody uses the tools that are available to them. One of the important tools is the authority Congress has given for the FDA for remote inspection of foreign facilities, because travel is limited. And in reality, that's important to maintain a good global supply chain, to maintain access because there's a backlog. There's a backlog of inspections and that backlog could threaten potential future approvals or patients' access to medicine. So these are just two of the lessons I would highlight, Steve. Well, one of the things I wanna share with our audience is, is that Viatris is a new name out there, but it is a huge, sprawling, transnational company. My words, you know, my sense of it is that people don't, you're all over the place, all over the world. And as you say to people, you want to help uh, people at every stage of their life live a healthier life. What does that mean to you? When you kind of talk about supply chains, I mean, you have a lot of different boxes you have to check off with people when it comes to care. But I was interested in this statement about helping people at every stage of life. What does that mean to you? Well, that's, that's actually what we're all about. That's at the core of our mission is to empower patients worldwide to live healthy at every stage of life. We do that independent of geography or independent of circumstances. That's what really motivates and empowers and drives our 30,000 employees across the world. And we're passionate about it. We're relentless about it, about the improving access of patients. Now, what are the ingredients? The ingredients are, number one, you have a very diverse and robust product portfolio. We have generics. We have brands, we have biosimilars, we have complex injectable, complex products. And that's important because we purposefully designed it this way so we can address a variety of healthcare needs in the US and around the world. Secondly, you combine that product diversity with a global scale, as you said, with 165 countries. So it allows us to you know, think globally, act locally, act globally, think locally, whichever way you want to say it. You combine that with scientific capabilities that we have. They're passionate about breaking down barriers and innovating in manufacturing, making high quality products. Product safety is very important. Again, it's all about access. And then I mentioned our workforce of 38,000 colleagues around the world that are passionate, united by that mission you know, of, of doing good things but also as a company and doing well because of that. And it's starting to be recognized. I'm happy to hear you here talk about it. 
Uh, we recently were recognized by Fortune magazine uh, uh, on their very famous, you know, change the world list. We're one of the top five wow. companies in the world to be mentioned on the list for the work that we do for HIV and AIDS over the last 10 years. And we were also named by Forbes magazine recently as one of the world's best employers. So we're starting to be recognized. It feels good. But what drives us is really that passion about access and empowering patients worldwide. Well, congratulations on that designation. We're at the, the Hill, and the Hill's watchers and readers yeah. are generally interested in public policy questions and politics. And I guess, you know, the big question I want to, you know, ask is, you know, as you're kind of looking at this from your perch, and I should tell our audience, you know, the healthcare system is, a, is very complex. There are a lot of players in it, but government matters. And I'm always interested in asking somebody in one corner of that sandbox what they think the other side could be doing to improve health care for patients, putting patients at the center. And so from your perspective, what advice would you give to government as by way of being able to generate better health out outcomes for patients? Okay. Steve, look, we're all about access, right? As I mentioned, that, that's what drives us. And I think what policymakers should be focusing on is where healthcare is going and not where it has been. Um, the U.S. particularly has been a leader and is a leader in access to high quality, affordable generics. You know, the Hatchman -Wax Act, uh, Hatch Waxman Act of 1984 has been a game changer and striking the right balance between you know, innovation, encouraging new medicines to come to market, but then also competition that brings prices down and expands access enormously. If you look at small molecules, that has been extremely successful. U.S. has 90% utilization rate of generics now for small molecules. But the science is evolving. The world is evolving. The policy needs to evolve, too, and policymakers need to take that into account. And I think one of the examples for that is if you look at biologics. Biologics mm. are very, very important part of healthcare now. Eight of the top 10 products by spending are biologics. If you look at the 10 most expensive Medicare Part B drugs, they're all biologics. And th there's no sign of that stopping. If you look at the pipeline going forward, maybe half of the products that have breakthrough designation are now biologics. So it's an important part that that trend continues. And the regulatory pathways are working. You get biosimilars approved now, mm -hmm. right? But let me give you some statistics. There's 30 biosimilars approved in the US now. Only 20 of them have launched, and only five of them have a market share of more than 20%. So you contrast that with the 90% utilization in, in small molecules, and you immediately see the problem. And the problem is because competition is not uniformly supported. And it, now, the good news is I think Congress is aware there are multiple, multiple bills out there that are all aimed at aligning the interest of patients, of healthcare providers, of payers, uh, you know, aligning towards the increased use of lower cost biosimilars. And we support all of these ideas. They're all helpful and will help improve access for patients. Yeah, clearly competition matters. Let me just ask you finally, and I, I, I like this statement. I was looking up things you've said and, you know, one of them, I'll say, you know, in foreign policy, I do a lot of foreign policy stuff. They always say, don't look at the world uh, uh, as you hope it will be, but look as it, it, it as it is. You've said that Viatris was created with a vision to seek care, healthcare not as it is, but as it should be. Should be. And I'm, yes. I'm sort of interested, you know, as you look at Viatris's role in also doing better, reaching that patient, being different. What are some of the big elements of that of that playbook? Yeah, look, any kind of policy change, any kind of change takes a village, right? And different players have different roles to play. I think one of the roles that we as Vietris can play is to provide knowledge because that's what policy makers need. Uh, knowledge, technical knowledge we have, medical knowledge. You mentioned look at the world, so international knowledge, like what are policies in other countries that are working? What are the unintended si uh, consequences, et cetera? And we can really bring that to bear. We communicate regularly with local constituents, with policymakers, with HCPs, with non-government organizations, but very importantly, with patient advocates, because ultimately it's all about patients. And you know, doing this, I think, is even more important with the backdrop of the pandemic. And I believe Vietris can really be a credible partner, because remember what I told you about our diverse pipeline. We have 1,400 molecules. We're not focused on a particular therapeutic area. We're not here to push a particular product. Our goal is to improve access and have better health care. And I think that makes us a credible partner. It connects us with policymaker, a shared vision for making this a better world. And, and bottom line is access is part of everything we do. We're passionate about access for our patients, not only for high quality drugs, but passionate about breaking down those barriers, breaking down regulatory barriers, legal barriers, supply chain barriers, whatever they are. And you know, that's what we mean by empowering 
everybody to live a healthier life, independent of geography or circumstances. So Steve, you, you will hardly find a more passionate partner than Beatrice. Well, Michael Gettler, Chief Executive Officer of Viatris, it was really great speaking with you, and I want to thank you so much for supporting today's important conversations. Thank you, Steve.